Hello everybody, today I am bringing you a better office scrolling tutorial for ClickTeam, if you wanted to make a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game. So, to start off, this is a brand new uh, project. I just went up here and hit new, and the only thing I've done is renamed this to tutorial. I've done nothing else except record 15 minutes of footage before this, and realize that when I hit run, uh, it wouldn't capture... Uh, this window here. It only captured this, which is wonderful. So, uh, maybe it's for the best. Maybe I just made a crap video before. Anyway, so right here you have your frame. Uh, this white space is the frame, and this dotted line is your window. And it just so happens that they're the same size. If you wanted to make your window bigger, which I do, uh, you'd go over, you'd hit Tutorial, or I guess it'd be application one if you didn't change it. And you go up here, and you would click on this second thing from the left called window, and you'd put in whatever you want. So I like 1025 by 768. Would you like to modify the size of the frames? No. No, I wouldn't. Because that's going to mess with things. So you see the window, uh, the dotted lines here, they're no longer indicating the window they're indicating the frame. But if I were to make the frame larger, so let's make it a uh, 1600 by 768, you'd notice that right about here, this is exactly 1025 pixels, there's a dotted line telling you that this is the window and this is the frame. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, uh, you're gonna wanna make a background. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if you wanted to know how I did that, hold on. I should probably, if I'm making a tutorial, I should probably tell you what I'm doing. Uh, you right-click, and you hit Insert Object, and I use active objects, as just about everybody else does. I know some people will use, like, a background or active picture or whatever, but I find that active objects are perfect for just about everything. Uh, so then you make your active object, and if you want to change the position of it, you go over down here, after you've clicked on it, you go to Properties, and you hit this thing that looks like a, uh, uh, like something if you were to move it around in Paint or something. It looks like that, except it's got a square on the top left. So you click that, and I want it to be at 0, 0, which is going to put the center at 0, 0, and not uh, the top left corner, which is aggravating, but uh, the world goes on. So now I do the width to 1600, or however big my frame is, and the height to 768. Then I calmly and leisurely move uh, to just about where that should be. I don't know, I'm roughballing it, I'm sure. Roughballing it, I've invented a new word as well. Uh, I'm sure that it doesn't really matter. If you're one or two pixels off in your super high detailed background, I'm sure you'll get over it. So. With that out of the way, let's make a quick, cheapy background. I don't want it to be red, that hurts my eyes. Let's make it gray. And, uh, I don't know, orange. Do do do. There's a door. There's a desk. And there's another door. That door's shorter because that one is for, uh, short people, of course. Yeah, you know what? It's the pizzeria. Pizza. That's for kids. You know? Big door for adults. Adults. Yep, that says adults, and this says kids. Not to be confused with kids like goats. And I guess since, since this is a fan game, you got yourself a fan. Uh, this is why I am a coder and not a artist. Anyway, it'll serve just fine. Uh, so there you go. You have your frame that is specifically bigger than your window so that you can have uh, your window scroll. So the first thing I like to do is make sure that my variables uh, are all named appropriately so that I don't get confused. So I'll name this background. And then what we're going to want to have first is a object that our screen can always be centered on. So let's say, let's put that eh, right about in the center, 
and no, we don't need to edit how that looks. Nobody cares how that looks. Nobody's going to see it. Uh, we'll call that screen center. All right. Now that we have a screen center, we're going to need to have uh, boundaries so that when you put your mouse over these said boundaries, your screen moves that way or that way. Um, you could put them on this layer, but it would... Essentially what would happen, if you put them on this base layer, they would just stick right on this side and this side of the frame, and they wouldn't move. So like you could put your right cursor there, and eventually, since the screen would move, your cursor would move off of the right boundary. And we don't want that to happen. So what we do is we go over here to hit New Layer, or if you don't have that, you can go up to View, Toolbars, uh, Layers Toolbar, or Control plus K. So you go up here to New Layer, and uh, I like to just hide the layers that I'm not working on because it clutters up my view. You can insert uh, two more objects, although I'll do one at a time, and put that right about there at the left boundary. And let's make it, uh, I don't know, 128 by as tall as my frame is, so 768. And then I right-click and hit Clone Object, hit OK and bring that second one over there. So now I right click. Uh, let's make it pretty. And there you go. It's beautiful, right? So to prevent what I was talking about before, uh, about your um, boundaries moving like they're not supposed to, to prevent that, you go up here to your layer and make sure that your layer is selected in properties and not like the, the left boundary or the right boundary or anything else. Make sure that's there. And you're going to go down here to scrolling options and you hit 0 and 0 for your X and Y coefficients. And what that's going to do is essentially tell the game um, don't move these boundaries. Just keep them exactly where they are in the window uh, but you can move the background behind the other uh, the other things. So important, go and rename your objects. Uh, rename, duh. Right boundary. Okay. Now that that's done you go into your event editor and you hit new condition. Uh, and since we always want this, the entire screen to be centered on the screen center, obviously, that's why we named it that, you're going to go to new condition, hover over these gear things that say special, you right click and hit always. And that's going to make a condition that uh, your computer always checks for, no matter what. And it's always going to make sure that whatever is in this always thing is fulfilled. So you'd go over there always, and you would make right-click on this thing that looks like a uh, chess piece next to a board called Storyboard Controls. You right-click, and go to Scrolling, and Center Window Position, relative to screen center. So essentially that's going to say no matter what happens, no matter where screen center is, the screen is always going to be centered right wherever screen center is. Which is going to be good for us. So now what we're going to do is go to new condition and what I want to do is every let's say every uh, hundredth of a second that's the shortest time interval in click team. Every hundredth of a second, I want the computer to check if the mouse is over a certain uh, boundary, whether it be left or right. So I'm going to do that every hundredth of a second. 
I want it to check if it's over the right boundary. Uh, no, you wouldn't go over there. You would check um, if it's over the right boundary. No, duh, mouse. Check for mouse pointer over an object. Right boundary. And so if it's over that right boundary, I want the screen center to move um, relative to itself. I want it to move, uh, let's say, 15 pixels to the right. OK. And we're going to copy that for the left boundary. So you go over here and you hit Edit. You hit Left instead. And you come over here and you make that negative 15. So now, what you really have here is something that looks terrible. <laughs> you want to go and uh, make these invisible. Now what you would do, usually, is make uh, the screen center invisible too, but I'm going to keep that on for the sake of demonstration. So now you have your, uh, your scrolling mechanic, see? It looks alright, might be a little too fast, but that's okay, you can change that. Uh, but what's not okay is if I put my right mouse over there, that screen center just keeps going. It will never stop. And if I put it over the left, the same thing happens, which is not good, obviously. So what you can do about that is, say you wanted it to stop, uh, let's say, 200 pixels from the either boundary. So you'd go over here, and you'd see what boundary that is. That's the right boundary. So... I want this to carry out so long as this next thing is true. So I want to check the position, compare x position to a value, and I want it to be less than whatever my right boundary is, minus 200. So that's going to be 1400. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the right, except I'm going to make sure that the X position is greater than 200, obviously, because the left, the right boundary is 1600 pixels, so if you want it to stop before uh, the right boundary by 200 pixels, you would do 1600 minus 1400, or minus 200, and get 1400, and here you would add 200 to the left boundary, which is 0. And so now, you can put that right over there, and see it stops. And you put that over there, and it stops. So essentially right now, you have a scrolling office, which is very nice. Uh, most fan games have this, if not all of them. So then you can make this invisible, yada yada yada. And there you go, it looks nice, you have your kid entrance. You have your adult entrance, you have your pizza, and you have your fan. What more could you want? Uh, I'll tell you what more. Next time, if uh, this tutorial actually gets any views, I will show you how to make uh, a camera, maybe. Or I'll show you how to animate that beautiful fan. Or I'll show you how to actually pan camera images, or any image rather, back and forth without the player having to interact with it at all. Anyway, uh, you guys could tell me what you want in the comments, or what have you, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.